Artists and crafters like you create amazing work, but I often feel you're let down by your photographs. In this video, I'll show you how to make your artwork really stand out on social media with just a few clicks of your mouse using a totally free software called Canva. My name is Ali Manning from Vintage Page Designs and my passion is handmade books. Let me show you how I make my journals Pinterest worthy using Canva right now. You're going to begin by going to canva.com and creating a free account or if you have already created your account you're just going to hit the login button okay here i am on my home page now i'm going to assume that you have uploaded your photos to your laptop to do this but you can also work with the canva app on your ipad and the process is essentially the same thing there are two ways to edit photos you can edit them within a design or independently of a design and there are advantages to both I'm going to edit a photo without putting it into a design first. The way I'm going to do that is I'm starting right here on my home page. I'm going to go over to the right side and hit the upload button. And I'm going to choose a photo that I would like to edit. So choose a file. Let's look on my laptop for an image I would like to edit. Now I created a terrible image here where it was completely blown out. So I'm going to show you how I edit that to make it into a usable photograph for Instagram. So it's going to open up in a pop-up window and it's going to prompt me to use it in a design or just edit the photo by itself. And that's what I'm going to do. Edit photo. And it's going to pop up in another window. Now there are filters you can use, but I do not use the filters. I like to adjust the photograph myself. So you're going to have three options up here, the effects option, the adjust and the crop. So first we're going to go over to adjust. Now this photo is completely blown out, so I need to reduce the brightness. You're going to see I could do auto adjust, but I again, just like effects, I like to have more control. And then I could do the whole area or I could just do the foreground and background. But I always just use the whole image. Here are some options here, which I'm sure you'll recognize if you've used any other photo editors like temperature, brightness, contrast. You can affect the color and the texture. So I'm going to use a variety of these. I'm going to start by reducing the brightness by dragging the slider to the left. And you can see the numbers on the right. Gosh, I've got to go all the way down to like minus 43. So it's definitely taken away some of the brightness, but yeah. The photo looks a bit dull. So I'm going to increase my contrast so that some of my lines are a little bit sharper and more pronounced. Then I'm going to scroll down. And I think I'm going to increase the vibrance and saturation because this pink now, this little book is quite dull. So let's first increase. There we go. That looks good. Increase the vibrance a little bit more. It still feels a little bit blurry. The, the pink book in the foreground looks a little blurry. The ones in the background are meant to be blurry, but I would like this book right here, the pink book with December on it, to be a little sharper. So next I'm going to go to Texture. I'm going to make it um, a little sharper, and then I may add a tiny bit of clarity. Now, the nice feature about editing a photo not within a design is that you can compare the foot before and after. So if you see up here in the top left corner, there's a compare button. If you press on that with your mouse and hold it down, you'll be able to see the before Then release your mouse and the after before, after, before, after. I still feel like I would like more pink in there. Ooh, that looks much better. Let's do a comparison before and after. I have not been able to find this compare feature when I'm editing a photograph within a design. If you have, please let me know, but I've never been able to find that option. So I do really like this just to show me that I'm on the right track. Now I need to decide if I'm going to crop it so I can hop on over to the crop section. I could freeform crop it, which is this option here on the left. I could crop it to a square which you would do for Instagram. So if I click on there, it's going to put a purple box around the image and I can move it around. So I could hit square and then say done. If I don't like that, I can hit the back button up here and it removes that.
crop. Let's go back to crops. Perhaps I would like a 16 by 9. Perhaps I'm going to do a YouTube cover image. If I go along to the right a little bit, I can do a 16 by 9 vertical, which I could use in an Instagram story or in a reel. However, I don't want that for this one. I might just do freeform. So let's reset. Let's get rid of that purple box. Let's go to freeform. And you can freeform move the edges and corners of the outer part of the image to crop inwards. So I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to hit done. If I want to rename it, I'm going to click on I up here, click the little um, pencil, and you stab binding and hit save. Now it's giving me the option to download it back to my laptop or save it within Canva. I'm going to choose save in Canva option. Now you can see over here on the left is the original image still intact. Then over here or to the right of it is the edited image that I have renamed and made my edits to. Now I would like to create a design using this. I'm going to make an Instagram post. Let's hit the big purple button, create a design. It's going to give you some suggestions. Would you like to do an Instagram story, an Instagram post? Perhaps you'd like to do a Facebook post. There's all sorts of different options right here. You could also do a custom size as well. You could also do um, a pin as well. So find, if we had add in here, Pinterest, do a nice long skinny pin. But I am going to go back to Instagram post. It's going to open in a new window. And now I'm going to go over to this left side and you're going to see lots of options. Now here it's given me some designs that I could use. So if I wanted to add the this text or scroll down some different graphics, I could use one of these. Personally, I, I don't go that crazy on Instagram. If you happen to see a little crown in the lower right with a pro, that's for the paid version. There is one tool which is part of the paid version, which I really, really love. And I will show you that towards the end of the video. So let's go over to the left and we'll click on uploads to find our photograph that we just edited. So I could drag over my image onto the canvas. I can move it around a little bit. So it's positioned how I would like it. Click outside of the canvas. And honestly, that's perfectly fine. However, I could add a little frame. So let me, I'm going to highlight the, the canvas. When I click on it, you get a purple border. I'm going to hit the delete button on my um, keyboard and get rid of that. Look to my left and look for elements. And then I'm going to scroll down and find frames. I'm going to choose a square frame for my Instagram image. So I like this one here. It almost looks like a postage stamp. I'm going to drag it across. And I'm going to drag the corners so that it fits my canvas perfectly. There we are. And then I'm going to go back to uploads where I edited images and I'm going to drag it across and it's going to drop into that center space. So drag that over. And again, I can move it around within the space. Click outside the image. Now I'm finding that blue a little much. So why don't we change the color of that blue? If I highlight it, let me just highlight it there. You can see it's um, surrounded in purple. Go up here and you'll see the color blue. I'm going to click on that. It's going to give me some different color options. So I have some brand colors, which I often use. However, um, you can use any of the default colors. You could use a gradient or it picks out colors from the photographs for you, which is really smart. So apparently there's this bizarre beigey color. I don't really like that color. I could use this pink, it's a bit much. I could use a gray, I could use white, but I wouldn't really see the scalloped edge. 
I think I might like the pale blue. Oh, I like that. Um, the gradient is also fun as well. You could have a good time with that, but I'm just going to keep it nice and simple and go with the pale blue. So right now I could be done, but what I think I'm going to add is a little watermark to it or my name to say who created it. So the way I like to do that is by creating another canvas. So if you look up here in the top right of the image, there's a little plus button. It says add page. I like to create my watermark here and then drag it on top of my photograph. Okay. So the way we're going to create a watermark is to head over to this left menu again and hit text and then add a text box or you can just have your cursor inside the canvas and hit the T button on your keyboard and it's going to give you a little text box. This little link icon here is if you would like to add a link say to a web page or something embedded within the image but um, I, I don't you wouldn't be doing that if you're adding it to Instagram. So let's highlight our text box. I don't like that um, font so let's choose another font. If you go over here in the top menu, you'll see the names of the different fonts. You click down the drop down and you have all these different options over here. Lots of really popular fonts. Um, some of them are paid, which is indicated by the little crown, but there's dozens upon dozens which are not paid. I'm going to use this one called Moon Time. Now this is quite small, so I'm just going to increase the size of my canvas over here by using this little slider in the bottom right and I'm going to write created by Ali Manning. Now if I want to increase the size I can, I think I probably will. So I can increase the size by either dragging on the corner here or clicking on the number. I think I'll make it 45. Now, I don't really want black because that's really going to show up and that's not really a watermark. So I'm going to change this color. So let's go back up here under the A. It says text color. So right now it's black. You can see that because it's highlighted with a little purple box. I could make it that pale blue, which is kind of fun. But I really like to do it in gray. So I'm going to choose a sort of dark gray color. I could go with a very light gray. Instead of that, I'm going to make it dark gray and then I'm going to reduce the transparency of it. So it kind of overlays my image a little bit. So now it's 45 font It's in dark gray is in the font I like. I'm going to highlight it once more by double clicking on my mouse. Then if you go up to this little square here with lots of smaller squares in, if you hover over, it says transparency. I click on that, I'm going to reduce the transparency. So right now it's 100% at zero, it's disappeared. So I'm going to put the transparency at about 50%. Let me click away from there and you can see it's slightly transparent. Let me go a little more transparent, I think. Oops. There we are. Now I've made my watermark, I'm going to drag it onto my photograph. Let's just make this a little bit smaller so we can see what we're doing. Highlight it, right mouse click, and I'm dragging it onto my image. That is a little bit, we need it to be a little darker, so I'm going to reduce the transparency. Oh, I like that. So I could put, oops. You have to be careful that you don't move the um, frame at the same time. There we go. Let me cl double click on my text box and I could move it to the left, I could move it to the top. I quite having it in my, like it having it the lower left. So there we are. I can get rid of this second canvas now by hitting the delete page button. That's that little trash can right there. And I am happy with my image. I think it's ready to post on Instagram. So let's save it. Uh, first, we need to give it a name. So up here in the top right, let's say, let's call it mini stab IG for Instagram. 
So let's download it now. You're going to hit this share button with the upwards arrow. You could send someone a link to it if you wanted to share it with a friend. But you're going to hit download. I like to download it as a JPEG, but you could do it as a PNG, but I like a JPEG. Now, if you have the paid version, you can make the file size smaller if you would like to, if you want it, want it to take up less space on your laptop or your iPad. But if you have the free version, I don't think you're going to have that option. And then I'm just going to hit download. And then you're going to choose where you would like to put it. So I'm going to put it in pictures, project images, mini stand binding for Instagram. Now it's saved to my laptop. Now let us edit an image inside a design. So go back to the home page. And instead of hitting the upload button, you're going to hit create a design. And again, I'm going to do a, hmm, what should I do? Should I do a Facebook post this time? So say you're sharing something in a Facebook group that you belong to, then a Facebook post would be a good option. Now I'm going to go across to uploads and I'm going to upload an image to work with. So let's hit upload and I want to work with another mini book. I think I'll choose this one. I'll double click and it's going to upload over here on the left. When it's ready, I'm going to drag it across and it's going to fill the area. So this photo is fine, but I would like to um, edit it. I don't like this kind of gray bluey background. So I'm going to click on the image or click on the canvas and then we're going to have the option up here to edit photo. When we click edit photo, it's going to look very similar to the way we edited the photo before. So we could do um, filters again. We could do special effects. We're not going to touch those. We're going to head on over to adjust. And I'm going to attempt to get rid of this bluey background. So I do that by hitting the brightness button. And also the highlights and that does get rid of some of that bluey background. Now I want to make this a little sharper, I think. So if I head down to texture, you can see that the leaf in the foreground is getting a little sharper. I like that. Okay. So, and then it looks a bit cool. This blue looks a little cool. So I can go back up to the temperature here and I can warm up, warm it up. Or cool it down. So if I go to the right, it's going to warm it up. If I go to the left, it's going to cool it down. No, we don't want cool. I want it warmed up a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better than it was. So I'm perfectly happy I could use this image now. I can add a border. I can add any cute little stickers that I want to. I can add a watermark. Because we don't have the option to compare when we're editing within a design like this. Uh, one way that I sort of a hack, one way of getting around it is I add another page and then I drag the photo, the unedited photo across. Oops, not that one. Unedited photo across and you can see the difference. Let's make the, make it smaller. So that's, that's quite a bit different and that looks a lot better. So I would be happy to post that on Instagram. Let me show you another popular way for crafters and artists to use Canva, and that is to create a collage. So I'm going to go back to the home page and I'm going to hit create design. And I think I'm going to do another Facebook post. Here is my canvas for a Facebook post. I'm going to go over to the left here and I'm going to choose elements. And then scroll down and choose grids. Let's show all the options. There are lots of different options depending on how many photographs you have. I really like to do sets of three or four. Scroll down. Let's see if we can do a set of four. Let's get it pleasing to the eye. Now we're going to go over to uploads. We may have already uploaded our photographs. So like this one right here that we edited earlier, we could add, we could just drag that straight across. I really like that. But now I'm going to upload some more images to go in here. So let's hit upload. Let's go and find some more files. Some more images. That one. Let's upload another. That one. A 
Okay, that's the same as the one I already uploaded. So I can hit those three buttons and move to trash. Let's find a different one. That should be plenty. Okay, so I'm going to drag them across to fill in these squares, but they might want editing. So I do would I would like to edit that. So let's click on the image. It's got a purple box around it and hit on edit photo. I'm going to show you um, one of the premium options here, which is a background remover. Um, it is part of the paid uh, version of Canva, but I do have a coupon code for you below so that you can try it for free for a certain number of days. So you may want to try that. So I've highlighted the image with a purple box and I'm going to hit this button over here, which says BG remover, background remover. And let's see what happens. Ooh, that looks good. So that's completely got rid of the background. I'm gonna, I've just double clicked on it. I'm gonna drag it so that it's a bit larger. And click, there we go. Double click again, I'm gonna move it around so it's centered. And there we have another little image with the background removed. I really like how that pops. If I want to edit it some more, I could. I hit edit photo, go to the adjustments. If I want to make it the color a lot more saturated, I can, but I think it's fine as it is. Let's go back to uploads on the left and let's add another one. Let's drag it across. Again, we could use uh, removing the background, but let's do that a different way. I've clicked on it. It's got a purple box around it. Let's hit edit photo, adjust, and let's just increase the brightness and the contrast. That looks pretty good. It's pretty similar to the background remover. It's just still got a slight blue tint. We might be able to get rid of that by adjusting the temperature by making it a bit warmer. Still a little bit of a background, but, you, but it's really not bad. And then finally, let's bring over this image right here. Oh, ooh, that's nice. Let's, I'm gonna do the background remover again. So I've highlighted that image, go over to edit photo, background remover. And then we have a nice collage of images. Let's make this larger. If we want to make this a bit bigger, we double click on it until you get sort of a gray background and then I can drag these corners. Drag these corners to increase the size of that image and move it around its little square. There we go. Click out of it to stop adjusting it. Okay, there's our little collage of images. I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to name it Mini Book Collage. Need to download it, hit the share button, hit download, and then save it as a JPEG. And there we go. So I hope you've enjoyed this very quick introduction to editing photos on Canva. I will be, if you like this video, please hit the like button so that I know that you would like more Canva tutorials. There are many, many, many more things that you can do with this amazing tool, including video and reels and shorts. So if you would like more of this, please leave me a comment or just hit the like button and I would be happy to make more Canva videos. All right, take care folks, have fun working with Canva and enjoy making your craft projects really shine.